Good morning. So we're going to go ahead and continue <clears throat> taking notes on section 2-2 that we started Friday. And this is just a special um, rule sort of by itself. If you take the derivative of x with respect to x, it's just 1. And we can do this with the power rule too. So let's say y is x, then what's its derivative? Well, let's give it its um, power that's really there. So you could do power rule with it. You could bring that power down to the front. And it's x to the 1 less. So 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so it's just 1. So generally, if we're taking the derivative of just an x term, then we'll just write 1. Now the next rule that we were ready for is... Um, example three, finding the slope of the graph. Finding the slope of the graph of f of x equals x to the fourth. for each value of x. And a part is x to the negative 1, or x equals negative 1. So in calculus, when we see slope, we think derivative. So we're going to start out by finding the derivative of f of x. So f prime of x, so if we have x to the fourth, that's power rule. So we bring the 4 down to the front, and it's x to the 1 less power. So that is our formula for the slope of this function. And now we can evaluate the slope at x equals negative 1. And it's just plugging in the negative 1 for the x. Negative 1 to the third is negative 1, so the slope is negative 4. This is just a notation that I do, I believe, um, Maybe when I first learned calculus, that might be how my teacher did it. So she would just say the slope evaluated at that value. Okay, let's do one more. Let's see. Let's do B part. Let's evaluate the slope at x equals to 0. And we had the slope formula to be 4x to the third. So the slope evaluated at x equals 0 is 4 times 0 to the third, so it's just 0. And now, example 4, let's find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x equals x squared when x is negative 2. So we want to find the equation of the tangent line. Well, first off, we know how to find the slope of the tangent line. The slope is equal to the derivative of the function. And the function is a nice polynomial, so we can do the power rule. Bring the power down to the front, times x to the one less power. So that's our derivative for the slope, or our, our derivative of our function. So that's our formula for slope. And we want to know the um, slope, or the equation when x is negative 2. So let's do the slope evaluated at x is negative 2. So it's 2 times negative 2. So it's negative 4. So now it's algebra. You have a slope of negative 4, and you need the, the point, or you need the y-intercept. And neither are immediately available to us. But if we go back to our original function, we know the x value of the point. So we can find the y value by just plugging the x value in. So the y value would be 4. <coughs> so 
so now we've got the point and the slope, and we can do the point-slope formula. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So that is y minus the y-coordinate equals the slope times x minus the x-coordinate. And that's your equation, and you can go ahead and solve it for y if you'd like to get it into y equals mx plus b. Okay, the next um, rule, and the last one we'll do today, is called the constant multiple rule. If f is a differentiable function and c is a real number, then that real number times that function, then cf, is also differentiable. And the derivative of c times that function with respect to x is, remember how we could bring, in, with a limit, we could bring the constant to the front? We can do that now, so it's just the derivative, it's just c times the derivative of f of x. And I didn't quite write that with the right notation, c of f of x, the derivative of c times f of x. Okay, this is really great and handy. We'll do some of these examples with this. Um, a part, y equals 5x to the third. So we have a constant times something to a power. So we can say that the derivative is 5 times whatever the, the derivative of this x to the third is, which is 3x to the second. So then our answer is just 15x to the second. I don't normally split it into two steps like that. I normally look at it as that's a constant, and I'm going to bring this power down and multiply it by that constant there and make the x to one less power. We get the same result, and... Um, it's probably the way that you'll begin to do it too, but I'll show both ways for a few minutes. Example B. What if y is 2 over x? Well, that's immediately unfriendly. We want everything in the numerator, if possible. We want to rewrite to a friendlier way. So we would take this x to the positive one that's in the denominator and move it up and make it x to the negative one in the numerator. And then we notice that we have a constant times something to a power. So the constant multiple rule says you can bring the constant out in front, and then you can multiply it by the derivative of x to the negative 1, which is negative 1x to the 1 less. Then you can multiply those constants together. And lastly, we should probably put it back in the original form, so we would want to rewrite it with posi um, positive powers. Let's see, f of t equals 4t squared over 5. This might not immediately look like a constant times a power, a variable to a power, and you might be a little concerned about the 5 down there, but it is a constant. It's 4 fifths times our t squared. So if we think about it that way, we can do our derivative. We just write the constant down, multiply it by the derivative of the t squared, 2t to the first, or just 2t. And then we'd make the 2 a fraction, and we'd multiply straight across, and we'd get 8t over 5. Okay, got 3 left. d, y equals 2, square root of x. Anytime it's possible to rewrite it with a variable to a power, we want to do that and make that more friendly. And the square root power, if you remember your power and your root, it's x to the 1 half. Now it's more friendly and we can take our derivative. 
We can take the constant out front, or we can just try to simplify that step. Um, we can take the power and multiply it by the constant that's there. 2 times a half. Half of 2 is 1. And then it's that x to the 1 less power. A half take away 1 is negative a half. And then you would rewrite that with positive powers. And then you'd probably go ahead and put that back into its square root form. E. Y equals 1 over... times the cube root of x squared. So that is um, going to require quite a bit of rewriting. First, notice that you've got a constant here, so that's handy. Mm, I don't know if you want to... I'm, I'm going to think of it that way. Let's see. And then x to the two-thirds, that's power over root. We want everything to be in the numerator if possible, so we'll move it up to the top and make it a negative power. Now we're ready to take our derivative because now we've got it in that nice polynomial form. So let's take the power and multiply it by the constant that's out front. So a half times two-thirds negative is two-sixths or one-third, negative one-third. And that power gets one less. So negative two-thirds minus three-thirds is negative five-thirds. And now we want to rewrite to get it back in the original form. So we'll move that five-thirds to the bottom and make it positive. And you could have done this all in one step if you wanted. So that's three x to the power of five, and it's a cube root. All right, very last one. Y equals negative 3x over 2. Okay, let's rewrite it just a little bit so we see the constant times the variable term. So the derivative is we can give that x its power and then just multiply it by the constant. So 1 times negative 3 halves is negative 3 halves. And then it's x to the 1 less. Or we can know it's a constant. And the derivative of x is always just 1. So we can do it that way too. I'm sorry, I thought that was our last example. But I forgot we needed to talk about this too. And you might remember from class Friday, Harrison actually asked about this. So this is theorem 2.5. It's called the sum and difference rules. So the sum or difference of two differentiable functions, f and g. So you've got a function f that we can take the derivative of and g that we can take the derivative of. So if we add those together or subtract them, then what you get is itself differentiable. And it says, moreover, the derivative of f plus g or f minus g is the sum or difference of the derivatives of f and g. So sometimes we might have the derivative of sort of a, like two separate functions that they're wanting us to take the derivative of. And it's easier to just think about taking the derivative of the first one and then taking the derivative of the second one. So this is actually um, a pretty nice extension. So, example seven. Oh, I want to ask you to look at example six on your own. Because it shows the power of parentheses. And how just adding a simple set of parentheses can totally change what you're doing for the, um, the problem. So please be sure to look through that. So example seven. What if we have f of x, this is a part, equals x to the third minus 4x plus 5. Well, this is a polynomial. 
it could be seen as three different um, functions that we're taking the derivative of. And we could just take the derivative of each one of them individually. So we won't look at it as one great big thing. We'll just take the derivative of each little part. So first off, we've got the derivative of 3x squared. Power rule, 3 comes to the front, x to the 1 less. And then it's minus, we have the derivative of 4x. We can just do the constant times the 1, because the derivative of x is 1. Or we can do general power rule and bring the 1 down times the 4x to the 1 less. And x to the 0 is always 1. Last, we have the derivative of a constant. And the derivative of, con of a constant is always 0. Remember y. It's like um, y equals 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's a nice horizontal line. Derivative is slope. So what's the slope of a horizontal line? Alrighty, so then we would just clean that up and you'd get 3x squared minus 4 as your derivative. These are super nice um, and very handy. B part, um, g of x equals negative x to the fourth over 2 plus 3x to the third minus 2x. I'm going to run out of room, I'm afraid. I'm going to realize that that's a negative one-half constant right there. Other than that, I think everything else looks like it's in great shape. So I'll work it right up here at the top. Then we're ready to take its derivative. So... 4 times the negative a half, half of 4 is 2, so it's negative 2, x to the 1 less, plus 3 times the 3 is 9, x to the 2nd, minus 2 times an x is just 2, or you can do the power rule if you'd like. Last but not least, this is a great um, example to look at. Let me go ahead and go to the next screen. We have y equals 3x squared minus x plus 1 all over x. Now that looks kind of complicated. And if I were to try to move this x to the numerator, then it would like all be multiplied by x to the negative 1. I could do that, that'd be perfectly fine. We could distribute that negative one. But what I'd rather do is, I'd rather do an extension of I love math. See that is three separate fractions that have that common denominator of x and separate them. So you have 3x squared over x minus x over x plus one over x. I don't know that it's better, but that's probably what I would do. Then I would simplify this to just 3x, and I would simplify that to just minus 1, and then I would rewrite that as a friendlier thing as x to the negative 1, and then we're all set up and ready to take our derivative. 3 times uh, x to the 1 power is just 3. Derivative of a constant is 0, and right here we get negative 1 times that 1, x to the 1 less. So that's 3 minus 1 over x to the positive 2. I did forget something. Um, back on page 109, I'm using it, but I didn't point it out as a formula. This constant times x to a power. Oops, they're using n for power. The actual formula of the constant times x to a power that we're using is c times the n, like we've been doing. Multiply that n by the c, and then it's x to the n minus 1. This is called the, um, it's a combination of the constant multiple rule and the power rule. 
let me just do, <laughs> I'm sorry. So it's like this, it's the ones we were taking the derivative of that were in this form. We multiplied the three times the two, and then it's x to the one less. Alrighty. Now you can do your homework, which is on page 114. That is posted on Google Classroom.